Okay, question seven, it, I, on a quick scheme, it should have been similar to question six. Let me read it more carefully and uh, make sure I didn't misread it. So it says, in a quasi-static, kind of unnecessary, the, almost every question we give you, unless it tells you it's a free expansion or something that's uh, decidedly non-quasi-static, you should assume it's quasi-static. Uh, we'll discuss that in more detail, I think, week four, so next week. Yeah, so, you know, quasi-static isobaric expansion, the guess of oh, amount of work. Some amount of work, the initial pressure and volume of the gas is one atmosphere and some volume. If the internal energy of the gas increases by 55 joule in the expansion, how much heat does the gas absorb? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was. So, you know, sometimes the questions give you extraneous information that's basically distractions. These are what I would call distractors. Because the question having given you this extraneous information kind of leads you to thinking, oh, I need to calculate the, um, the, the final pressure and final uh, volume. And I think once you're in the mindset, then you get lost by the fact that you, you actually have incomplete set of information. You are not given number of molecules, which means you don't um, know the temperature. Oh, but I think that's fine. In the ideal guess law, N and T kind of occur as product. So I think you can handle all of that is extraneous because all this information was unnecessary in the first place because it's asking for heat. And whenever a question asks for heat, the first thing your mind should go to is the first law of thermodynamics. And the first law says that change in the internal energy comes from two sources, net heat transfer, and the work done by the system. Or solving this for heat transfer, um, heat transfer can always be accounted for by the change in the internal energy plus any work that the system does, which um, normally would decrease the internal energy. So, so the question actually gave me both of these directly, amount of work and change in the internal energy. So the net heat is simply the sum of those two. Um, so 91.85 joule of heat. I think I did the sum correctly, right? Okay, yeah, 91.85. So that's it. Um, so if, if you got the concept correctly, you can do this in like hot, less than a minute. <laughs> it took me longer than that because I'm trying to explain that uh, simplicity of um, how you can answer some questions that may seem difficult or may seem to be missing information. Um, you can answer them very quickly if you got the concepts right, because you know exactly the right thing to do. And sometimes, you know, getting to that takes practice. That's kind of why you have this homework set. 